Hi, this is going to be an introduction to how to use SketchUp to complete exercise four. And this assumes that this is one of your first experiences with SketchUp, so we'll kind of set things up as we go too. So I've started up SketchUp, and SketchUp's default often shows you Susan here and shows you an architectural layout. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to change some of our preferences so it gives us something better. The template that's chosen can be changed and let's go to the one of the better ones for the projects we're doing in our shops. We're going to second from the bottom and it's called beginning training template units are in inches. We'll say OK. Nothing changes here yet but if we go file and new we get ourselves a brand new template and it views from the top and gives us our coordinates and everything works way better. The next thing is we're missing some of the views and tools that we're going to find handy so we're going to go to view toolbars and make sure we show the large tool set and then go to view toolbars and make sure you can see views because that's going to allow you to change your perspective on the project that you're making and we'll start with the top view. So now there's one other little trick that we're going to have to do before we get too far with this. When we draw this object we're going to use the appropriate tools. Now I'm presuming you've been through the, temp uh, the tutorials and you know how to, to draw basic shapes and pull and push and all that sort of stuff but there's something that might confound you and you'll see this in a second. If I were trying to draw say this building I'd want to draw from the top view something that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight units by four units. And I draw it like this. Here's the problem. If I draw this thing, we cannot tell, looking in the bottom right corner, what the dimensions are of what we've just drawn. And the reason is, we haven't maxed out the size of the screen, and there's still a chunk of the screen that's hidden down below like there. So make sure you've sized your screen so that you can actually see that bar. And if you're in windowed view, change it so you're in maxed out view. You can maximize the window size on your screen. Now that we've done this, I can type this, I can type in some numbers and I can see I wanted to make something that was 8 comma 4 and hit the enter key and you'll notice if I zoom in on it, it's the wrong shape. I wanted it to go up and down. So this time when I draw it, first of all I'm going to zoom extents so I'm good and close to it and I know my way around moving this thing like this. I'm going to hit control Z and undo. Be ready to do that a lot. And this time when I draw it, I'm going to kind of get the right general shape and I'm going to observe what's there. Small number, big number. Okay. 4, comma, 8. Easy. Now you notice when I drew this, I also drew it from the origin. That is where 0, 0, 0 intersects, the three axes. Draw from there out so that you've got a good reference point. Where you start drawing from is really important. Okay, so now that I got that shape done, there's a few different ways you can draw this model, but I'm going to do it by drawing the wings, bit by bit, building by building, or section by section. So this one, I've just drawn that roof, but it's down at the, the floor. So I've got to pull it up so it's exactly eight units tall. Easy. Push-pull tool, start dragging it, and type the number eight. Notice that the default is in inches. I don't even have to put that symbol there for the inches. Okay, next I'm going to draw this wall here. So I've got to observe that this one is one, two, three, four, five by one, two, oops, one, two, three, four, five, six units. So five across, six tall. And I can try to estimate that. I'll try to make something that is definitely taller than it is wide and observe, ah, yes. So this will be six and that'll be five. I'll type six, comma, five. Now I didn't touch any buttons or click anything in between and it lets me resize just like that. Now I want to take this, this object, whoops, and I want to pull it out. It looks like I've got to pull it out four units. Easy. Just type a four and hit enter. And then lastly I've got this little wing here. It's three units tall. It sort of cleaves this thing in half and it goes all the way across three units tall. Well, this is going to be pretty easy too. I'll start from a designated corner, go all the way across, and notice when I get to about three units, it snaps into place because that's the midpoint along here. And it already gives me the units. Five by three. Hit enter. I'm done. Now I've got to pull this out by four units. So there's four, type four, hit enter. And lastly, I've got to cut a little chunk out of this. It's going to be three units tall, one, two, three, the whole height of this thing by two across. Once again, easy. I rotate to make this a little bit easier on myself. Now it's going to snap at three by two and a half, but I can override it by typing three, comma, two, and hitting enter. And remember, I started drawing from here, so I controlled where the stretch and, and, and expansion point is. And this thing is two units indented. So a little push. Two units gives me exactly what I want. Now that looks like it's pretty good. It looks like it's matching the size perfectly, but it's worth doing a little orbit to see if there's any flaws in it. And if I roll around this thing, I actually did pretty well. If there were any extra lines that really shouldn't be there, you could use the eraser tool and you could get rid of those pretty quickly. 
To see this from an orthographic view, which is what this thing is, I would choose the ortho view here, or ISO, sorry, the ISO view, ISO. And if I really wanted to make it match, I'd turn off perspective and hit ISO. So that's exactly the view that you see here. Ladies and gentlemen, that's how to do exercise four in a nutshell. There's other ways to do it, but that's a good one.